An inquiry into bullying and harassment of the House of Commons clerks is underway, following Newsnight's report into the treatment of these apolitical staff who run the chamber and committees. Clerks such as Kay Ems, who left the service of John Burko after less than a year, Angus Sinclair, who says he was bullied by the same speaker, and Emily Commander, who says she left the Commons because of bullying by Paul Farrelly, MP. Both Mr Burko and Mr Farrelly deny any such bullying. Those cases are all well known to clerks in the House of Commons. But there's another name whose absence from our reports actually raised eyebrows. A clerk whose time in the House was notorious because of the experience that she had working for Keith Vaz. A clerk by the name of Jenny McCulloch. After the experience I had had with Keith Vaz and knowing that it could happen again and thinking that I had a reputation among my senior colleagues who I admired so much of being a, a classic bully's victim instead of someone who had stood up for the house. I, did, I had no confidence left in my ability to do my job. Keith Vaz, first elected in 1987, has had a chequered career. His tenure as Europe Minister from 1999 to 2001 ended amid a storm about how the Hinduja brothers got citizenship. He became chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee in 2007. That ended, however, when a newspaper claimed he was caught hiring prostitutes and showing willing to buy drugs in 2016. Newsnight's new allegations relate to that chairmanship. We have... We You're have, providing a little bit of variety, though. Mr Brand, uh, you have... Making it more like Dad's army. First, his behaviour did not follow some of the conventions of the House and, in the view of Clarks, broke its rules. Second, he's accused of bullying staff who stood up to him to enforce those standards. Third, managers recorded their view that he was a bully but didn't stop him. It raises questions not just about bullying, but also about whether Parliament allows some MPs to ignore protocols and practices which are in place to protect the public interest. The most important rules for select committees are the so-called liaison committee rules, which govern select committee trips. The ideas behind them are pretty simple. First, MPs shouldn't be able to pursue their own interests, be they hobbies or business affairs, when they're on a trip at taxpayers' expense. And MPs should be kept safe. They shouldn't be put in a position that might compromise them when they're out in an unfamiliar environment. So the rules set out things like that select committee members have to travel together, that they shouldn't accept hospitality from third parties, that they shouldn't go off in the middle of select committee trips for their own personal purposes to, to hold meetings of their own. And those rules might seem petty, but the purpose of them is to ensure that taxpayers know that their money, which is being intended to be spent for the benefit of the select committee, is, is in being spent for that purpose, and that no one can make any allegation against members that they're using that taxpayer's money for improper purposes. There is some flexibility about how MPs spend free time, for example, but clerks are there to protect the committee and its members from allegations of impropriety. That requires the clerks to know what's planned with some precision, something that didn't happen on a trip to Kiev and Moscow in 2008. That visit was particularly problematic because there was so much of the programme that I didn't feel that I had control over. And when the visit was running, I felt that Keith Vaz was trying to isolate me and keep me in the dark about some of the things that were happening on the visit. There was a, a dinner on the trip that hadn't been worked out in advance. I didn't know what this dinner was going to involve or really who was going to pay for it other than that the chairman, Keith Vaz, was organising it. And when you got to this dinner, was it just a few of you in a back room? Or? It was a very large event, a very opulent meal uh, with a lot of guests um, who I didn't know. And what went through your head when you saw that? I was worried about the implications for the committee and for the House. I was worried that if there were people there who had other 
interests that this might put the committee in a vulnerable position. In contemporaneous email sent back to her boss, Ms McCulloch was less guarded. The chairman refused to tell me who we would be meeting or what the arrangements were, beyond that we would be dining with Ivan, a friend of his who was, or used to be, I couldn't find out, a senator. I have absolutely no idea who the other people there were. When I asked during the dinner, the chairman told me that he didn't know, beyond one gentleman whose card said that he was the chairman of the board of an investment company. We didn't pay. I don't know who did. So you're on a visit relating to human trafficking. You go to this dinner with unknown people, paid for by you don't know who. This makes you all quite nervous and unsettled. Yes, because I felt that not knowing those things stopped me from being able to do my job, which is to protect the committee and protect the House. All I felt I could do was report back. Things were not getting better. No more information about tomorrow night's dinner. The chairman says that, like last night's, it will be paid for by his friend, but that members may make contributions if they wish. When Mr Vaz allowed some members to go on a separate excursion, Ms McCulloch reminded him of the rules. I suggested that when we got back to London, we might have a discussion about free time because the Liaison Committee authorised expenditure for visits on the understanding that all participated in the whole programme. A representative for Mr Vaz said... The Russia and Ukraine programme, including this dinner, was approved by the committee before it departed on the visit. The clerks were fully aware of the contents of the programme and how it was financed, as they were responsible for costing the programme. Nobody, including the clerks, raised any concerns with our client regarding the dinner, whether on the night, the next day, at the next committee meeting in London, or at any other time. However, Newsnight has seen emails from the senior clerk on the Home Affairs Committee to one MP a few months after the visit. She clarified that neither the clerks nor Foreign Office were involved in organising that dinner. They didn't know who was present. Newsnight has also established that MPs on the trip were uncomfortable enough that some sought to make a contribution to the cost of the dinner. We've also learned that Clerks have often been blindsided by him on other trips in ways that they feel put the house's reputation at risk. Take a trip to India and Bangladesh in the same year, 2008, to inform the committee's work on immigration. Someone present on that trip explained what they saw. We chartered a private plane in Bangladesh for a committee trip. We were sat in the airport's departure lounge. There were around 10 unidentifiable Asian men in there I realised I recognised them from the London restaurant where Keith Vaz would take stuff for dinner. They came on the plane, the plane that had been privately chartered for us. They said he'd invited them. They followed us around on the trip. Foreign Office notes on that trip, obtained by Newsnight via Freedom of Information, note that... In Bangladesh, the main focus was on the interests of the UK's curry restaurant industry, which lobbied the committee before and during its visit. A representative for Mr Vaz said... He cannot recall if any British Asian restaurateurs joined the committee on the flight. He would not be surprised, however, if it were the case, as the committee's inquiries remit included considering the long-standing issue of facilitating entry into the UK for individuals in the catering industry. And, he said, the committee had invited... Those in the British Bangladeshi community with an interest in immigration issues to join it in Bangladesh. We've heard similar stories about committee trips involving Mr Vaz time and time again. We keep hearing about unexplained meetings, unplanned excursions, mystery about who exactly was paying for what. The thing that makes that Russian Ukraine trip different though is just this. A clerk tried to stand up to him. So you told the chairman that you thought he was breaking the liaison committee rules? Yes. And how did he take that? He was very angry about it. He told me that I was completely incompetent, that I didn't know how to be a clerk and that I didn't know what my job was. Her emails say... He then demanded to know what age I was. He told me that I didn't know how the house worked and that I didn't respect the authority of members. His authority in particular as a senior member of many years experience and chairman of the committee, that I had an attitude problem. 
And at one point during this tirade, he told me that I wasn't capable of serving the committee because I wasn't a mother. Because he saw part of the job of clerking as somehow maternal? Well, I didn't know. All I knew was that it wasn't normal to be harangued about my fertility status in reception of a hotel at public expense. Uh, in front of my colleague on the team. I think there were other members of the committee there. I think there may have been some foreign office staff and other guests of the hotel. So once you got back from the trip to Russia and, the, and Ukraine, how was your relationship with Keith Az then? I would say it was worse than it had ever been. The criticism of me got worse. He picked up the theme of criticising me for not being a mother and so not knowing how to look after a committee. I didn't understand it. <laughs> I was bewildered by it and I didn't know what to say about it or how to deal with it. So how did the work of the committee sort of continue? Well, we'd go to see the chairman in his office for, for team meetings to talk about the work of the committee, but sometimes his criticism of me became so disruptive of the flow of those meetings that we weren't able to get on with the work. So uh, I was then told not to come to the meetings. So just to be clear, you were asked not to go to meetings of the committee of which you were a clerk because the chairman would spend so long criticising you that nothing would be done. Team meetings, yes. It was unpleasant at the time, living through those moments that were really awkward for my colleagues as well as for me and difficult to get through them without losing respect for myself, although I kept trying to stand up for the job that I was doing. Newsnight has found other witnesses to Mr Vaz's behaviour, who describe him as a bully towards Ms McCulloch and other clerks. And we kept hearing that people who got the worst of his behaviour were the people, like Ms McCulloch, who stood up to him. A representative for Mr Vaz said, He categorically denies that he bullied any clerk, or anyone else for that matter. No complaint of this nature has ever been brought to his attention. Our client had considered that he and Miss McCulloch had previously had a good working relationship and had always considered her to be very effective as a clerk. The treatment of Jenny McCulloch was no secret. Her immediate boss noted in her annual review for that year, Jenny had excellent relations with Home Office officials and other witnesses and with all the committee apart from the chairman who chose to try to bully her. Jenny understandably and properly stood her ground, which the chairman resented. Managers at the House of Commons then knew what she was going through and they didn't stop it. That ultimately is why Ms McCulloch left the House of Commons service. Newsnight has found though that her successors working on the Home Affairs Select Committee found that they were no longer expected to enforce the rules and protocols of the House on Mr Vaz. Just give him what he wants. It's not worth the grief. I really wanted to keep doing the job and I didn't want to be bullied out of it. I second guessed every judgment that I was asked to make it became harder and harder and harder to maintain the appearance of <laughs> being able to lead a normal professional life and by the end of it I had become very disillusioned with the ideals that I'd had at the beginning of my time in the house. I felt let down by senior managers who I thought I had been trying to emulate and trying to help in the job that I was doing. So you complained after you left the house service? Yes, I complained against the management of the house. I felt that it had failed in its duty of care toward me. I didn't feel able to complain about Keith Vaz because I was afraid of him, because 
he had a lot of influence. When I was on the Home Affairs Committee, I saw that he had friends in the police and friends in the law. Um, he said that one of the principal clerks was a friend and by the time I was leaving the house, he had a friend in the speaker. I thought it could only end badly for me. The House investigated her grievance and they reported back. I have no doubt that during her time as second clerk to the Home Affairs Committee, Jenny was treated by the committee chairman in a manner that was inappropriate. But, they said, the House had not failed in its duty of care towards her. So the House conceded that you'd been bullied by Keith Vaz, but they didn't concede that they had failed in their duty to look after you while you were being bullied by Keith Vaz? That's correct. A spokesperson for the House of Commons said, We are aware that in the past the House has not had a robust process in place to deal with instances of bullying and harassment. We are confident that our new independent complaints and grievance policy will mean that allegations can be dealt with effectively and sensitively. I think there are a lot of former staff who, like me, saw their future in the service of the House and wanted to do an excellent job for it. And I think they're exactly the sort of people that the House Service needs it has been prepared to sacrifice them for those members.